We also talk about the essential role and responsibility of the church, that the church profess and proclaim Jesus Christ. That's why it's very important. Up until now, so many people are lost. They don't know who Jesus Christ is. They don't know how to really experience true life. Good morning, church. How are you, church? We have been going through a series on why church. And it's my prayer that by now, you see how important the church is. Have you prayed lately, Lord, thank you for your church? Napag-pray niyo po ba yun? Lord, salamat po for your church. Church... Why is the church very important? So, so far we have studied about a safe spiritual home for kingdom people. The church is a safe spiritual home. It's a place where you could come and really be safe because this is the church of Jesus Christ. We also talk about the essential role and responsibility of the church, that the church profess and proclaim Jesus Christ. That's why it's very important. Up until now, so many people are lost. They don't know who Jesus Christ is. They don't know how to really experience true life. And the church has been given that role. The church also has the responsibility to be able to open the key. To have the key, I mean to open and enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a very important role of a church. And then we also talk about a mission to non-kingdom people. That the church is not only to be here, but we are to go and share the gospel. This morning, we will talk about the maturity and ministry of the church. Lord, guide our study of your word this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us not to be hearers of your word only, but to really be able to apply. Speak to us, Lord. Protect us from the evil ones. Help us to focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you have been to amusement parks where there's a billboard that has hole where you could put your head? No? You've been there, right? No? Para pag wala kang kadate, sama mo. Punta ka doon. <laughs> okay. Or like this, no? So muscled you put your head. Or like this, okay? No? But what if it would be the other way around? No? Meron ng face and what you put is your body. <laughs> Have you seen something like that? Wala, no? No? No, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the head and we are the body. We, the church, is the body of Jesus Christ. Now, how do we look like as a body of Jesus Christ? Pwede bang ganito ang itsura natin? Jesus is the head and then we are so thin. Bagay ba to? Does this fit? You all know it doesn't fit, right? No? What kind of body does Jesus Christ want to have? It may not be a muscled body, but definitely a body that is healthy. All of us want to have a healthy body. Tama po ba? No? We all long to have a healthy body. But how could we have a healthy body? A matured body. Okay? Have you ever thought what's the difference between a train, a car, compared to an airplane, aside from the fact that that airplane flies? You know what's the big difference? The car, the train, they could reverse back. And they could stand still. But did you know that the airplane, when it starts to fly on the air, it cannot stand still? Nor could it reverse because the airplane needs the wind. The positive and the negative force of the wind that, that's in between the, the wings of the plane that makes it fly. 
So if it stops moving, it's dangerous for the plane. In the same way, we as Christians, the only safe for us is to take forward steps, to move upward. As a church, we need to continue on and not stop. Once we stand still, it could mean falling down. So as body of Christ, if we are to be matured, if we are to be healthy, we need to continue to move forward and to move upward, becoming more and more like Christ. And that is what a church of Jesus Christ is. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, it says, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which, with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness. Look at that. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Paul is saying that we're being diligent. It means to do everything, to make every effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit in our oneness. For us as a church to grow, each one of us should do our part in growing together. So the first point we need to understand as a church of Jesus Christ, His body, we need to grow in being united in and through Christ. We need to be united. The body that is not united, it will not grow well. We need to grow together. I, have you, you know, somebody gave me a dumbbell recently, and I, so I started to do dumbbell. Yeah, would you be able to imagine if I only do dumbbell with my right arm? Ito hindi ko gagamitin. Ano mangyayari sa akin? I, I have a, a person that I know, he's so muscled, man, no? But he did not exercise his lower portion. So he looks so muscled on the upward, pero dito ang payat niya. Looks good? No. <laughs> Jesus Christ doesn't want his church to be in balance. And the only way for his church, because you and I are part of this church connected together, hindi pwedeng itong side lang ito ang nag-exercise. Ito tong side na to, hindi. We need to be united so that we could grow together. It will be abnormal for a church to only some members of the body are growing, but other members are not growing. Actually, in medical field, that's called what? That is actually an ailment. We now are living stones because of the Holy Spirit that is why we are connected to one another. You and I, before it says here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, there is one body, one spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We are one in Christ. And this is the very key in our essence as a church. Remember what a church is in Greek? It is the word ecclesia. And that word ecclesia means gathering together or assembly. So you could never say, I, I am part of the church, but I don't want to join the gathering. Because the church basically is a gathering. It's an assembly where we could actually be able to carry out the one another, serving one another. Loving one another in humility as we read a while ago. Caring for one another, ministering to one another. And a church is ecclesia. It means we are called out from where? Where were we called out from? Look at this verse. It says, For He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His Son, Jesus Christ, who purchased our freedom with His blood and forgave our sins. This verse is telling us that we were all before, where, we, where were we before? We were all in darkness before. In bondage to Satan. Do you still believe that there is really Satan? This afternoon, my wife and I, after the 
2 o'clock uh, equipping of the leaders of the Tagalog service, we would right away have to go to another place because they said, meron dang mumu. And we need to cast out demons in that place. They said, because there's a big balete tree and there are other trees there, we need to pray. I said, okay, okay, we will go. Demonic spirits are real. We were all prisoned by demonic spirits. That's what it says here. But praise the Lord, we were transferred from the kingdom of darkness where we were dead in sin. We were transferred from the kingdom of darkness into His beloved, the kingdom of His beloved Son, which is now His body, the church. And you and I are the visible manifestation of the church. The visible ma the manifestation of the kingdom of God. So when people ask, where is the kingdom of God? The visible manifestation of the kingdom of God is the church. And someday soon, Christ himself will be here and it will be very visible. And I pray we would all be part of that. And Paul is saying in the book of Ephesians, the first half of Ephesians talking about the great spiritual blessings that we have, that great spiritual blessing that is incomparable, incredible, unsurpassable. It is an eternal blessing that we have because we belong to the body of Jesus Christ. We are now part of that living stone connected with the cornerstone that is sure, firm, unshakable. Rock, Jesus Christ. You and I are part of that. We were dead before, but now we are living stone, alive in Christ. Can you say that to the person beside you? You are alive in Christ. And then tell the other person, then live for Christ. If you were alive in Christ, the very purpose is that we would live for Christ. And that is the only way we could truly experience true happiness, true joy. You know, I always say this to, whenever I conduct a wedding, I said, Usong-uso ngayon yung happy wife, happy life. Totoo ba yon? If that is the principle that you follow, you will be frustrated. Because if, what if your wife would say, what will make me happy is that I want to take drugs. That is illegal. That's what makes me happy. Would that make your life happy? No. Who can give true happiness? It is God through Jesus Christ. We all have emptiness in us. And the only one who could feel that emptiness is Jesus Christ. That's why I tell them it's not happy wife, happy life. It's godly wife, blessed life. Godly husband, blessed marriage. Help your spouse to grow, to become godly. And they would find out that there is true joy. Because when you feel that M vacuum, that God-shaped vacuum in your heart with other things, there is no contentment. You will keep on filling that up. And it will be an addiction. It will never find contentment. But when you are filled, that God-shaped vacuum is filled with Jesus Christ Himself, I tell you, you would say, thank God. Thank God for the joy that I have. Thank God for the peace that I never have before. There's so many rich people already who could testify of this. They have so much money. They have so many cars. But still, there's emptiness. That's why they keep on looking and longing and finding out that there is no other way that they could be filled out. Somebody said that life is a gift to you it's God's gift to you. What you do with your life is your gift to God. What are you doing with your life right now? Are you doing something with your life right now that you would be able to present it to God someday and you would say, Lord, here is the life you've given me, entrusted to me. Lord, I present it to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God according to Romans chapter 12. Can you be able to say that now? Lord, here's my life. I offer it to you. It is acceptable. Is it acceptable? 
The Bible tells us that the best way to live our life is by continuing to grow, to be healthy, and matured in Christ. Please never forget this. That Christ is the very source of our identity. The very source of our unity as a church. But not only is Christ the source, He is also the goal of our unity. We have become one because of Christ. Because we were all from darkness. We were transferred into this kingdom of light. Now we are His church. We are one. But why is it that we, it says in verse 4, chapter 4, verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of the faith. Why? We have become one in Christ, but why until we all attain to the unity? Because the mere fact is, there is a great temptation by Satan making us want to do it my way and the others your way. Imagine if your body, one foot would want to go there, the other would go there, what will happen? That could happen to the church. Some of the church members, I want to do it my way. Some, I don't want to do it my way also. What happens to the church? It's breaking the church. There's still the sinful flesh. There's still the temptation from Satan. There's the influence of the world. And the world's influence, I tell you, is getting stronger and stronger. Did you know just, just uh, this week, there was a woman who was praying just in the perimeter of the abortion clinic in London. You cannot go near the, uh, uh, the abortion clinic. There is now a distance. And this lady, she did not even go to the distance. She was praying silently. And she was apprehended. The police asked him, what were you doing? Were you praying? And she simply said, maybe. And she was apprehended. You're not allowed to pray. Imagine praying silently. And they said, what? Even prayer silently, we cannot do that? You want to read our mind now? You can be in prison now for what you're thinking. Wow, what kind of world are we getting into? We're becoming primitive now. <laughs> and we say that London is a very advanced country, even U.S. We're getting worse. And this is, by the way, where we're going, according to the book of Revelations. Everything is going to get worse. In the last days, many people would go against God. Many people would say something against God, and those people, who are godly, can never say something against them, they would be in prison. Did you notice that? People would say so many things against God, but those who are godly can never say anything against those who are living in ungodliness or evil. When you tell them abortion is wrong, you could be in danger. According to Dr. John Piper, Christian unity involves three things that we should have in common. It says we should have, should have in common, one, having common convictions about Christ. That we really believe that Jesus Christ is the only one who could give us true life. Who could give you abundant life, a blessed life even right now in your marriage, in your family, if you're a student, if you're working, in your business. Jesus Christ is the one who could give you life that would truly satisfy. Do you believe that? That's called conviction. Do you have that conviction? Or we could easily be carried by, wow, ganda ng kanilang kotse, ang ganda ng kanilang bahay. Gusto ko ganun din para may, ma masaya ako. Now, recently, we talked to someone, sabi namin, what is your goal in life? Oh, I just want to be so rich that I don't have to work. That will make me happy. Right or wrong? Nee. That's not true. It's already proven. Do you really believe that in Christ, like Apostle Paul, you could say, in Christ alone, I put my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross. In every victory, let it be said of me, my source is strength. My source of hope is Christ alone. Can you see that? That's conviction. Second is common confidence in Christ. There's a unity in faith that you continue to grow in your faith in Christ by studying the Word of God. That's why I really encourage all of us, please, 
Kumusta po ang pagbabasa niyo sa New Testament? Manis pa rin pa buwan yung papel niyo? Ibig sabihin, hindi pa natsitsikan. <laughs> you can still catch up, please. Don't be afraid to catch up. The most important is you read the Bible. You see, I tell people, you know, we are now in the book of Acts in our reading here, and I tell people, you know, even though I've read the Bible many times, I continue to read it. You know why? If you do not focus on reading the Bible every day, you could easily be influenced by the social media, by Facebook, by the world, billboards, everything. But every time I read it, I said, Lord, thank you for reminding me again. You know, the book of Acts talks about how the church started, how the church continued to be empowered. Read it so beautiful. And I'm reminded again, Lord, wow, this is what a church is during that time. And this is what a church should be at our time as well. And then we should have common care for each other. You know, I praise God for people in this church who goes out of their way to cook food for those who are sick. There are some of you who would go visitation to visit people who are in need. There are some of you who would provide for the needs of others. There are some of you who would call someone and say, Kumusta ka na? How can I pray for you? That's caring for one another. That's beautiful in the eyes of God because that's one way that we could do one another. Serving one another, caring for one another, blessing one another, exhorting one another. You know, sometimes I hear people say, you know, I love Christ, but I hate the church. Or they would say, I love Christ, but I hate going to the church. Or they would say, I'm committed to Christ or I'm devoted to Christ, but not to the church. What do you think of that statement? That statement is very ironical. Because you could never say, I love Christ, but I hate the church because the church is the body of Christ. Try saying that to your wife. I love you, but I hate your body. Ano mangyari sa iyo? Bukol. Tama ba? Tama ba, Bardo Arman? <laughs> Sabi niya, oo. <laughs> you cannot do that also to your husband. Right? Because the church, Jesus Christ wants His church to grow, but the only way we could grow is when we are united. As we all know very well, united we stand, divided we fall. We need to be united. That's why you should never say something bad about the church because whenever you say something, alam mo yung UECG, Metro is ganito, you're saying something bad about yourself actually because you're part of UECG Metro is. Tama. When you say something bad about the person who is here in the church right now, you're actually saying that to yourself also. That's the church. Yan ang kabuuan ng church. We're one. We're connected. Interconnected. Tama. So, as a church of Jesus Christ, we need to be united. We need to grow to be united in Christ and through Christ and for Christ. And secondly, as a church of Jesus Christ, we ought to grow in being equipped to serve the body of Christ. We need to be equipped. Now, how many of you play basketball here or volleyball? You do play basketball, volleyball, huh? Galing, no? Uh-oh. Ayan, kapitin Pastor Reggie, nagbabasketball kami niyan. How many players in the basketball court? How many players? Five per team, so ten. In the volleyball court, six, six, twelve, right? And then, you know, you could see the people, the crowd that, were, that are watching, they're so excited, they would say, wow, go for it, go for it, palakpak pa yan. They would cheer, but whenever the players are not doing well, what do they say? Boo! Ilabas yan, boo! <laughs> now, think about it. What if you were about to watch a play of, you know, a basketball play, a basketball game, and then ang lumabas na maglaro ay ang coach, ang trainers. Assistant coach, assistant trainer, pati yung PT nila. Sila ang maglalaro. Anong sasabihin niyo? What would you say? Huh? You say, coach, let the players play. Kaya nga tinawag na player eh. Coach, huwag ikaw coach. 
Trainer, huwag ikaw. Trainer lang kayo. No? But did you know that that is happening in many churches? In churches, it's the pastors, the assistant pastors, those trainers, the teachers are the one doing everything. There are churches like that. Sometimes even the MC and pastor na. Sometimes even the sing inspiration, pastor na rin. <laughs> no? And the, the congregation would do what? Go for it, pastor. Go. Pero pag pastor is not doing well, what do congregation say? Huh? <laughs> Mahina lang, boo. <laughs> Hindi malakas na, boo, boo. Minsan patalikod pa. Kung minsan, you, you know, saying it behind the back of the pastor pa, boo. Di ba? But what is the design of God? Is that the design of God? That should the pastors, the workers in the church are the one who will do everything? Now let's understand first, what is ministry? What is ministry? You know, what is ministry? Ministry is simply serving to meet a need. That's just how ministry is. Simply serving to meet a need. There are so many needs that you and I could meet. Now, let's also clarify. Who is the owner of the church? Who are the employers of the church? Who are the employees of the church? And who are the customers of the church? Do you know who these are? You know, in, there was this uh, sales store then the, the person approached the sales lady and asked for the sales lady to help him look for a product. And the sales lady said, I am not sure if I could help you. Hindi ko alam anong gagawin ko eh. Hindi ko alam anong gagawin ko dito sa sales department eh. Now let me ask you a question. If a person comes to the church and tells you, oh, what is the vision of the church? What is the mission of your church? Or ask you, where is the comfort room of this church? What would you say? Or the person would ask you, who is the owner of this church? What would you say? Sino po? Yes, the owner of this church is, there's only one, it's Jesus Christ. If somebody tells you he is the owner of this church and that person is not Jesus Christ, that person is co completely wrong. There's only one owner and it will always be His. There will never be a change of ownership. Please remember that. Kung may magpakita sa inyo ng titulo, ito na ang bagong owner. Peke yun. There's only one owner and will always be the owner of the church. It will never change. That will always be Jesus Christ. Remember that. Now, the question now is, who are the employers of the church? Who do you think are the employers of the church? The employers of the church, okay. yeah. hmm. the employers, oops, sorry, Galinga, let's see, something is wrong. Oh no, oh no. Ah, sorry for this. Okay. The employers of the church are the leaders of the church. The leaders, the pastors, the elders, the officers of the church that were appointed, that were given that responsibility according to the Bible. Those are the employers of the church. But who are the employees of the church? Tama. You are, we all are employees of the church. We're here not just to sit down and listen and be served. Waiting, okay, sige, pagsilbihan nyo kami. Sige, sige, sige. Kape, please. A water, please. Nothing wrong asking those things. But remember, you are part of the church. We are part of helping serve the church. Mama. Imagine if all of us are just saying, uh, okay, I'll just sit down and I'll wait to be served. Uh, Brother Sermon, asa na yung ano ba, kape? Diba? What will happen? Papayat si Brother Sherman. Kasi punta dito, punta doon lahat. 
What will happen to the church if all of us have this kind of attitude? Right? It will never be an effective growing church because that has never been the design of the church. Right? The design of the church is that we will all be part of serving together. Now, who are the customers of the church? Who are the customers of the church? See, no? The customers of the church are those who are not yet members of the church. Those who are lost. They're still in the kingdom of darkness and we want to help them find true joy, true happiness in Christ. So we want to help them. Or those who are attending the church, but they are not members of the church yet because they don't understand what it means to be a member. That's why we encourage all of you, if you are not yet attending class 101, please make sure you join class 101. Okay? So, remember again, who, who is the owner of the church? Christ. Who are the employers? The pastors, leaders. Who are the employees? Lahat po tayo. And who are the customers of the church? Okay, these are now, let's see, the people who are still in need of the gospel. We need to reach out to them. Okay? No? Now look at this verse again. It says in Ephesians 4, 11 to 12, And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the what? For the what purpose? For the equipping of the saints. Can you say that to the person beside you? You are a saint. If you are in Christ, you are a saint because once you were dead, now you are alive in Christ. Every person who has Christ in his heart is called a saint because you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? You are a saint. No? So for the equipping of the saint, for what purpose? For the work of service, not for their own purpose, but for the building up of the body of Christ. Now, if you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have been given a spiritual gift. Every person who has the Holy Spirit in his heart or in his life because they have accepted Christ in their lives, he, they have a spiritual gift. No exception. Lahat po tayo may spiritual gift. Did you know that? Now what if a person says, I don't want to use my spiritual gift. I don't want. Now remember the parable that Jesus gave when he gave talents to five talents, two talents, and one talent. Remember that? Those who were given five and two, they were faithful in using the gift that they were given. But the person who was given one talent, he did not use it faithfully. Remember what Jesus Christ said? Jesus said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Enter into the kingdom. Right? But look what happened to the unfaithful one. Jesus Christ said, You wicked, what? Lazy servant. Wicked. If you're not using your spiritual gift, that's a very sad thing to hear. You wicked, lazy servant. And even worse is this. Sabi niya, throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What does this mean? Meaning a person who is not using his spiritual gift will be thrown out of the kingdom, meaning that person is not a true Christian. Now remember, each one of us has a spiritual gift. The question is not, should you be involved in a ministry? The question is, have you been faithful in the ministry? You can still be part of the ministry. Right? All of us. And the word equipping here that, that this verse is saying, 
is that a person would be helped to become mature in Christ and would be able to would be able to become adequate or sufficient for the purpose of ministry or serving the body of Christ. And all of us, we need equipping. Why? So that we could use our spiritual gifts effectively and according to the will of God. That is why somebody said, a minister is a failure if he does all the work himself. If I do all the work, and by the way, I know of some pastors who would do that. Ako na lang gumawa, ang tagal eh. But that's not right. That church will be a failure someday. Because equipping is part of growing the muscle of the church's body. Right? And that's why we have a discipleship group. Discipleship, each one of you be part of a small group because there, there will be healing, there will be mending of the broken issues of our lives in that discipleship. Of course, as pastors, evangelist teachers, we should also be involved in evangelizing, in teaching, but the main work of the pastor, evangelists, and teachers are to equip the saints. That's why this gift that is mentioned in Ephesians 4, this is about equipping gifts. It's in other verses of the Bible that's mentioned, oh, the other gifts that's for each of the members of the church. Church, UECG Metro is, do you still remember what UECG means and what is our mission as UECG? Remember? What does UECG stand for? United Evangelical Church of Green Hills. Okay? And what is our mission? Our mission is united in equipping Christians toward godliness to fulfill the Great Commission. Remember, godly wife, blessed life. Godly parents, blessed family. <laughs> and that's what we want to do. That each of you would become godly. Because that's the only way you could truly experience a blessed life. Where you could help your children grow to become matured in Christ. Remember that we are saved not because simply to be saved, but we are saved so that we could serve. All members of the church are called to be ministers. No exception. If you're a Christian, you are called to be a minister. So again, it's not a matter of, should I serve or not? No, you should serve. It's clear in the Bible. The question is, have you been serving faithfully? That should be the question you should ask. Have I been serving according to my spiritual gift? And so if you have not started to serve, I encourage you, please join. It's not too late. And when you are starting to serve, I tell you, you would grow. Those who are not serving, they will not grow as much as they should. There will be stagnation. And this leads us to the third point. We ought to grow in being built up to become more like Christ. The more we are united, the more we are being equipped, the more we grow to become like Christ. See that? He is the source and He is the goal. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.13, it says, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Jesus Christ. That's what He wants us to be. To become united in faith, united in our knowledge of the Son of God, and to become more like Christ. Wow. Remember, I told you a picture about the body. We all know it doesn't fit, diba? Right? It doesn't fit at all. Jesus desires that His church, which is His body, is to be built up. Dapat ganito po. No? Yan ang fit. He wants all of us to be part of growing up 
to become more like Christ. Because when each one of us are growing up, you are becoming like Christ, becoming like Christ, each one of us, then the church is becoming like Christ. And if you are really becoming more like Christ, you will be united. You won't say bad words against each other. No. You won't do things against each other because you are becoming more like Christ. And even with your children, even with your spouse, you will be transformed as a person. You grow to be more like Christ. And whether you're a student or you're young or old, grow to be like Christ. And I tell you, you would experience a blessed life. So the question is this, what are you doing to contribute to the building up of the body of Christ? What are you doing right now? to contribute to the building up of the body of Christ. Ano pong ginagawa niyo kaya ngayon? Na pwede niyo masabi, yes, I'm part of the building of the body. Or, without you knowing it, are you part of breaking up the body of Christ? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, if any man destroys the body or the church of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. Wow. So please don't ever think, okay lang, I say something bad about the church. I say something bad about people in the church. Oh, I tell you, you're going against God. You're going against God. You know, there was this late, there was this, oh, no. Oh, sabi ng iba, no. Kahit na, basta nakamakdo ako, kahit ganyan itsura ko, okay lang. You know, we don't like that, right? There was this, this uh, person, his name is Jim Corley. He met his friend Alex at the car dealership where Alex worked. Jim said to Alex, I mean, Alex said to Jim, Jim, I feel like a hypocrite every time I go to church because I fail to live for Christ so often. No? So, sabi ni Alex, Jim, ayaw ko nang pumunta sa church para akong hypocrite. Eh. Hindi ko naman nagagawa yung gustong ipagawa ni God, Christ sa akin. Eh. Jim said, Alex, what do you call this part of the dealership yung sa likod nito? No? What do you call this part yung sa likod dito? Alex said, you mean the showroom? Yes, what's behind the showroom? Past the part counter. Alex said, oh, that's the service department. That's where we service the cars. Pag may problema ang cars, it is service namin dyan. Or for maintenance. And then, Jim said, what if I told you I didn't want to bring my car to the service department because it's not running well. May problema yung sasakyan. Nahihiya akong dalhin doon. Alex said, that would be crazy. Because that's the whole point of the service department to fix cars that aren't running well. And Jim said, you're absolutely right, Alex. And he said, you know, you said that you don't want to go to church because you're not able to do what God is telling you to do. All the more you need to go to the church because the church is part of God's service department. Helping people get back in running order with God giving them the strength and helping them be tuned up. That's what the church is all about. That's what the church is. The church is not for perfect people. The church is for people who are in need of Christ and who need to continue to grow in Christ. We need, that's why we need equipping. We need small groups. You know, in a discipleship journal, Carol Mayhal tells of a woman who went to a diet center to lose weight. The director took her to a full-length mirror. Oh, meron na pala. <laughs> On it, this uh, director outlined, no? no? Picture siya yan, sa salamin. The director outlined what should be the right shape she should attain. Okay? And the director told her, this is what I want you to be like at the end of the program. And so, 
this girl, this lady started to really work on it. Dieting, exercising. And every week, this woman would stand in front of the mirror and she would say, Layo ko pa. No, yung design, yung nilagay ni director niya, pag ganun, siya medyo pabaliktad pa. <laughs> no? Sabi niya, nako, buti pa yung coke. <laughs> Sabi niya, yung kasi uso ngayon is diet coke na naka-coke and can na. Parang ganito ako. Kailangan mapupunta ako doon sa dating coke. Okay? But you know what? She kept on it. She kept doing it and never gave up. And finally one day, she looked at the mirror and she was able to get that shape. Conform to the long four image. And you think, what would she feel when she meet it? Ano naramdaman niya? She would surely feel joy, fulfillment, Rama. And most of all, she would say, wow, I was able to make it. And she would be able to present well to the trainer. Did you know that we, can, we are all not yet where we ought to be, but we can become more and more like Christ? As we continue to grow together, as we continue to grow, to be equipped, grow, to be built up in Christ. As somebody said it so well, he said by John Newton, who wrote that book, Amazing Grace, and became a very beautiful song. It says, I'm not what I might be. I'm not what I ought to be. I'm not what I wish to be. I'm not what I hope to be. But I thank God I am what, I'm not what I once was. And I can say with the great apostle, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And he wrote that book, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I'm found. Wow, just, the like, just like the song that we sang a while ago. You and I are not yet there, but by God's grace, as we continue to grow in our being united, grow in being equipped, and grow in being built up as the body of Christ, surely, surely, we will be winning church. We will be the church that God wants us to be. You know why? Because it has been promised already. It has been promised already. You know, many years ago, there was a local tribe, local tribal kingdom that was suddenly attacked by wicked, evil enemy. The people of that kingdom were not prepared that so many people died. Families were separated from each other. They were so badly hurt. Many children were left orphans. Some of the adults were carried away as prisoners. It was a very devastating and painful experience. And so after this tragic event, the people started to gather themselves and they were united to grow together and united to be equipped to be able to fight against the enemy. And they started to equip each other how to fight, how to put the right armors, how to protect themselves, and how to protect the community. How to protect this kingdom. And they were one army. They became one, they become so united and they have same strategy, same purpose. But sad to say, after many years, they started to become stagnant. They become idle and complacent because they could not sense the enemy is coming soon. So they became idle. They became complacent. And even later, they started to lose focus on their purpose. And they started to say something even bad against each other so that they started to fight against each other. What do you think will happen to this tribal kingdom? It would surely be defeated easily. Do you know that that is the picture of the church? We were all attacked by Satan. We were all in the darkness. And that's why many families are destroyed. Marriages are destroyed. But praise the Lord, we were transferred to His kingdom and now we are united. And God wants us to be equipped. God wants us to continue to grow in Him. But why? Because we know there's an enemy. But somehow many of us have become complacent. Because we don't feel the enemy anymore. And so we don't continue to be equipped. We don't continue to do what we're supposed to do. 
And that is why many churches have closed down in Europe and other places. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the enemy is still working strongly against us. If we are not careful, we will be defeated. But praise the Lord, someday soon, someday very soon, our triumph is very sure. Because the Bible clearly says, it says in, it says in, so, oh my goodness, what happened there? So, it says here, now to him who is able to do, can you read this with me please? Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To Him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Let us do our part. And let us pray to God, Lord, build your church, Lord. Build your church, Lord. Later on, I would like you to fill up this form. I would like you to really be part of ministry. Fill this form and give this to the usher so that there will be an application of what we are hearing today. Would you stand with me, please, and let's sing this song, For I'm building a people of power, and I'm making a people of praise.